Muhammad Ali knocks out Sonny Liston in the first round of their championship rematch with the Phantom Punch. Scottish racer Jim Clark wins the Indianapolis 500. He would also go on to win Formula One World Driving Championship later that year and the United States spacecraft Mariner 4 flies over Mars, becoming the first spacecraft to send back images of the red planet. The year is 1965. And this, Mercury Park Lane, was top shelf offering over at Mercury. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. The automotive channel that focuses on history, specs, design. The goal is to cover every single car from 1930 to 1964 and all cars outside of those parameters, especially the cars that never got reviewed for one reason or another. If you're new to the channel, this is our 426th episode. We do four to five episodes a week. Engine episodes on Wednesdays. We love the orphan cars. If that sounds like a channel that you'll totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. This 1965 Mercury Park Lane is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania with over a thousand cars for sale. I swear when you walk through the front doors, you can hear angels sing. Oh! It's literally like heaven on earth if you're a car enthusiast. Anybody can go there and it's definitely worth the pilgrimage to do so for directions to this honey hole of cars, hours, more information, pictures pertaining to this very Mercury Park Lane. Be sure to click the link below after the show. Tomorrow, we're doing an all new segment on the show called Part of the Conversation at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It will be live like a live podcast with Wild Bill from Vintage Car History. Anyone in the comments will be part of the conversation. You can chime in anytime you want to. Hope to see you there. 1965 Mercury model lineup was essentially broken down into two car lines. You had the Comet, which you could be had as the Comet Caliente or Comet Cyclone. And then you had the full-size cars, Monterey, Montclair, Park Lane. Mercury also offered wagons in the form of Comet, Comet Villager, Commuter, and Colony Park. Park Lane could be had as a four-door hardtop, two-door hardtop, two-door convertible, and four-door sedan. Mercury offered two different hardtop roof offerings. They had the standard hardtop that didn't really have a name, or the breezeway. The breezeway is key word for power rear window. First appearing in 1957 on the Mercury Turnpike Cruiser, 58 through 60 on the Continental Mark III, Continental Mark IV, Continental Mark V. They took a bit of a break and then they came back in 1963 through 1968 on full-sized Mercury's. Park Lane name goes back to 1956, where it appears on a Ford wagon. It was the fanciest Ford wagon that they offered in two-door configuration for 1956. Fun fact, they only offered it in 56, and it was to compete with the Chevy Nomad. Even though it sold better than the Chevy Nomad, Ford decided to discontinue it for whatever reason. Mercury offered the Park Lane in two distinctive periods, 1958 through 1960, and 1964 through 1968, both times being their top shelf offering, Mercury's premium model. 1965 saw a bit of a redesign, so let's compare 64 on the top, 65 on the bottom. Just wow, the 64 is a car that I've never saw in the wild before. They're very Thunderbird-like. Hold on a second, we're gonna put a 63 Thunderbird up here first for just a second. They are different. But it's intriguing, is it not? Anyway, 1964 on top, 65 on the bottom. Two totally different designs. But they do have a few similarities. Both have quad headlights. Both are made by Mercury. The 64 has a hood ornament where the 65 doesn't. Turn signals have been moved from the bumpers to the marker lights on the 65. Mercury script versus Mercury spelled out in block formation on the 65. Also look at the shapes. The 64 has more angles. Moving to the side profile, the 65 is more squared off. I'm not sure if sleeker is the right term. Blocky is, is a good term. It's very rectangular like. 
Serious question, looking at the car on the bottom, which is the 65, who wakes up and they're, they're like, man, I got to get the Pep Boys. I got to buy the most hideous wheels that I can find. They might look good on a Pontiac G8, but it ruins the whole vibe slash aesthetic of this car. I mean, here, I'm going to take a step further. Who wakes up in the morning and decides that they're going to lift their truck this high and put these ridiculous wheels on them? It's, it's, a, it's a serious question. The truck looks hideous, too. I don't get people who think that that looks good. Nothing about that's cool. Anyway, it's also worth mentioning that the bottom image has been flipped. Vent windows and windshield appear to be different. Moving aft to the stern section, I mean rear section, the roof profiles look different. It's more rounded on the 64 versus it has a crease on the 65. Bumpers, taillights, all different. Jumping inside to take a quick gander at the dash and interior situation, both are different. Which one do you like better? Let's talk specs. 218.4 inches long. Interesting. It's the same size as the 1959 Oldsmobile wagon we did yesterday. Crazy. And it's narrower at 79.4 inches wide. It's 55.1 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 123 inches. It weighs 3,990 pounds. Price $3,530, which is equivalent to you spending $34,375 and three cents in the year 2024. Total 1965 Mercury production was 346,751 units, of which total Park Lane was 32,407 units, and of that number, 6,853 were the hardtop two door variety. Moving on to engines, which there were two. Two engines, three flavors, starting out in the basement, 390 cubic inch displacement, V8, overhead valve, 6.4 liters. It's good for anywhere between 300 horsepower or 330 horsepower with the interceptor package at 4,600 RPM, 427 pound-feet or 579 newton meters at 3,200 RPM with a bore of 4.1 inches and a stroke of 3.8 inches. Compression is 10 to 1, 5 main bearings. When backed with a 3-speed manual transmission, 0 to 60 could be had in 7.9 seconds. Theoretical top speed of 126 miles per hour Average fuel consumption is 11.2 miles to the gallon, and these are all just jumping off points. Mileage may vary. The biggest and baddest engine offered for 1965 was the 427 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 7 liters. It was good for a really healthy 425 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 480 pound feet, or 651 newton meters at 3,700 RPM, bore of 4.23 inches and a stroke of 3.78 inches. Compression was 11 to 1, 5 main bearings. Transmissions, you had the 3-speed manual. 3-speed manual with overdrive, which I believe they have as listed as 4-speed, or the multi-drive Mercomatic Automatic. Standard features included but not limited to on the park lane was the Super Marauder 300 horsepower 390 V8 with a three-speed manual transmission. Cut pile nylon carpet with sun visors with vanity mirror, tripometer, map light, red and white courtesy lights at the bottom of the doors. Color keyed padded instrument panel, electric clock, heater and defrost, and front seat belts. Options. Not getting into all of the options, but here are a few. Interceptor 390 V8, 427 V8, Mercomatic automatic transmission, three speed with overdrive, power brakes, power steering, air conditioning, tinted glass, six way power electric seat, power windows. Behind these walls is Ford Motor Company's Dearborn, Michigan proving grounds, where some of the auto industry's most tightly guarded secrets are developed. New engineering features are given strenuous and continuous testing, and if they survive, they may be installed in market research cars and driven by typical auto owners to sample public opinion. This Mercury Park Lane convertible is being used to test average driver attitudes to an experimental steering control system, which could replace the familiar steering wheel. Called the wrist twist steering control, it was developed for Mercury by ex-missile engineer Bob Rumpf, 
who is ready to send the car off with a driver who promises to be about as non-technical as they come. Getting in is easy enough. Elimination of the steering wheel means additional room that is mighty important on entry and exit. Although the appearance may seem startling at first, the wrist twist steering control takes very little practice to get used to. Two five-inch rings turn simultaneously and are manipulated easily with one or both hands. A comfort feature of the wrist twist system is the addition of arm rests for both controls. Since only a light touch is necessary, the arms may rest solidly on the supports, just like in your favorite easy chair. Once on the road, other advantages are noticeable. The most obvious is improved visibility, both of the instrument panel and the road ahead. Most women will agree that parking is the most taxing part of driving, but not with the wrist twist. Still relaxed and comfortable, she literally dials her way into this tight spot. The test trip is over, and she takes her last look at the wrist twist controls. Or is it? You never can tell what surprises automakers may have in store just around the corner. Let's talk styling. Just look at this turn signal indicator. Also notice all of the different lines going on with it. I always kind of like these. They have a very blunt appearance. I love the grill. Big bright bar separated by three smaller ones. Headlights with headlight bezels. Mercury nice and proud at the top there. Just look at how the bumpers are designed. This car has a lot of different lines on the top of the hood. Coming down the side, just notice this line at the top protrudes more as it goes down the side. All of these bright bars. Another line here that stops at the wheel well. The wheel well isn't flared. Uh, it just has this nice little petite trim piece that goes around it. There's also another faint line here that runs the length of the car. It's sitting on 15 inch wheels. The car does have a series of rocker molding. Also notice this bead here. Cowl windshield wipers that go the same same way. Stainless around the windshield. This car does have drip rails that run the length of the cabin area. Mirrors are mounted here. So just notice the bright work here flags for Marauder. The deck lid is also very smooth. This car doesn't have fender skirts. Just look at that line. Gas filler door is on the driver's side.
this door has quite a bit of heft to it of wood paneling which is fake carpeting down here there is a vinyl material here as well as at the top and just look at all the bright work you have separating the color and materials armrest as well as door handle to pull the door shut this is the door handle to get out window cranks for the big window here and it operates like this notice it's all framed out trimmed out i should say and that top window crank is for the vent window there is a joystick style for the side mirror down inside the pedal box down here you have the emergency brake and or emergency brake parking brake release high beam switch is right there on the floor clutch brake gas pedal just take a look at this interior here is what over the hood looks like here is what first person over the hood would look like. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right, headlights, amp meter, oil pressure, gasoline gauge, courtesy lights, speedometer with odometer and tripometer, coolant temperature, clock, wipers, which the wash feature, you press the center of that button to activate the windshield squirter, lighter, left air vent, right air vent, ignition, heat defrost, fan settings, which there seems to be four settings, AM radio, ashtray right underneath it. Up above, there are sun visors, and they have this cutout that uh, doesn't sync up with the rear view mirror. Um, I guess it's the thought that matters. It's the thought that counts, right? So... This uh, sun visor over here has a courtesy mirror so your passenger could see what they look like. Rear view mirror here in center. Underneath the steering wheel, there is tons of space to put my hand in between my crotch and the steering wheel. And the only reason I show that is because if you wear size 36 pants, you are about the same size as me. If it, If you don't fit in the car, it's not fun to drive the car. And... This doesn't have a telescoping steering wheel, so you're pretty much left with wherever the steering wheel is. On to the glove box test. Here is our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. And it fits and shuts. So getting in the back, just slide the seat forward like so. And that's how much space you have to get back there. Here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. In this car, it is very nice despite it, despite it having a black interior. A lot of cars with black interiors, they feel kind of cozy. This car feels very airy. And this is what visibility looks like out the back from the back seat. There is a rather large parcel shelf behind the rear seat. Creature comforts. There is dome lights, but they're in the pillars. So I guess they'd be called pillar lights. One on each pillar. There's one there. There's one right behind me. There is a coat hook there. Dome light in center as well coat hook and another pillar light you have an armrest as well as ashtray as well as faux wood paneling and bright bit and this one feels frozen so we're going to try this one
and that's how the windows go up and down they don't go straight up or straight down and just notice how this comes back to a point let's talk about the seats these seats are really comfortable they are very they are plushy and they are comfortable the seat back is rather upright and it does dip down back here but it isn't uncomfortable with that said I um I have my one leg out so the door doesn't shut but that's all the knee space that I really have despite this car's huge massive size that's all the space that I have I'm not cramped per se it does have a center armrest in the back as well operates like that Under the hood is a 390 cubic inch displacement V8 painted orange. This one has the original windshield washer bottle as well as plastic bottle in our tub to put windshield washer fluid in if you didn't want to use the uh, glass bottle. Single brake master cylinder, no power assist attached to it, but on top of that, that looks like the power windshield wiper motor. Coil is tucked underneath the air cleaner distributor in the front. This car has an alternator. On the positive side, a different car that you never see in the wild. And I mean, never see. This is the first time for me ever seeing a specimen like this in the wild. Huge glove box, which camera fits inside. Nice plushy seats, powerful engines, four speed available against it. The design is a bit boring, mid 60s boring, not boring like half hearted cars are today. It's a big car. Rear seat space is very eh. With powerful engines come fuel thirst. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have 1965 Plymouth Sport Fury or 1965 Mercury Park Lane or 1965 Pontiac Bonneville? I mean Bonneville. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free pause the video moving on to this second scenario 1965 dodge polara or 1965 mercury park lane or 1965 ford galaxy 500 xl i'm gonna leave this here for a minute if you need more time feel free pause the video now it's time for name that tune first person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. And I don't say that for you guys not to get in touch with me. Like, if you want to talk to me, go ahead and talk to me. I get so fed up when you can't contact anybody. Um, maybe you want to do a collaboration or something. Reach out. I will get back to you. There are three ways in which you can reach out to me. You can send me a comment in the comment section below. You can check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel, or you can send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. I love reading the stories. I love the memories that you guys share. I think that's an awesome thing that this community has. Until next time. Why do birds sing so gay? Love is awake at the break of day. Why do they fall in love?